got new polling this morning showing Vice President Harris with a lead after last week's debate. The consult poll shows her with a 51 to 46 percent lead, puts her outside of the margin of error. Joining us now, Democratic strategist Lindy Lee, along with News Nation political contributor and Republican strategist Denise Gitsum. As always, uh, welcome to you both. Uh, Lindy, let me start with you, and I, I want you both to, to think and answer this question about the political rhetoric. Um, it's one thing to say we we do not tolerate political violence, but then both of the candidates head out on the campaign trail and it's democracy is a threat and our country is horrible. How do the candidates and the American public come out of now a second assassination attempt and concerns of violence? Thank you so much for having me. Well, I think the way that Vice President Harris responded to the attack or the attempted attack was absolutely right on target. She condemned political violence vociferously. Um, to your point, I don't think political campaigns should be penalized or criticized even for simply waging a campaign. And her rhetoric has been rather moderate. And um, she she condemned political violence, but can Trump do the same? This is the same guy who mentioned a bloodbath in the context of a potential loss. This is the same guy who posted a picture of Biden hogtied behind his back. This is the same guy who incited his mob to attack the Capitol. So I, I, I don't think there's an equivalent here. I think she, our party, the Democratic Party, is unequivocally on the side of condemning political violence, while Trump refuses to say to, to stay the same. To say the same. Denise, I'll bring you in now for uh, for the Republican response to what yeah. Lindy says. Well, I think the more we continue to point fingers at the other side, the more we continue to say that it's the other side's fault when, in fact, it's President Trump who's the one who is targeted by, who knows, people who hate him, I don't know if they're Democrats or not, um, really only furthers the division that adds to this, this hatred of one another based on our political disagreements. I think that what really would be the grown-up response is to say, what are, can we do? What can our party, what can I do? to make sure that my rhetoric doesn't add fuel to the fire, but rather tampers down sort of the temperature in the room instead of pointing fingers. I think that only furthers the violence that we're seeing now, and it makes it more likely that it'll happen again in the future. Yeah, I mean, I think we can, at the end of the, the day, at least agree we don't want to see this happen again and something needs to change. Lindy, let's get out on the campaign trail. What are you expecting to see from Kamala Harris now with the poll we just showed, a bit of a surge following her debate performance? What is the messaging on the campaign trail as her, as her campaign pushes forward? Well, we are certainly heartened by the news. As you indicated, she has a growing lead, but at the same time, the message will not change. We continue to be the underdogs, um, and that's something that she will emphasize time and time again. And she will do everything she can to shore up the blue wall of Wisconsin, Michigan, here I am in Pennsylvania. And given the electoral college disadvantage that Democrats face, she will need to win by that margin, by three to four or even five um, points in the national vote in order to overcome the um, advantage that Republicans inherently have. So those seven battleground states, that's where the ball game is. And that's why the campaign, both campaigns actually, have spent tens of millions of dollars right here in Pennsylvania doing everything they can to appeal to moderates and independents. Because guess what? The last 100,000 people to make up their minds in my state are going to decide who's going to be the next occupant in the White House. And so she is reaching out to moderates and independents, the 15% of the electorate that indicates that they still have not made up their mind. The ground game is interesting, Denise, from the Trump campaign. It's it's very old school. And you talk about a state like Pennsylvania, where Lindy is, is focusing. Um, they're, not, they're door knocking. They're picking up the phone and calling voters. The concern is, do those voters show up in November? How does Trump's team facilitate um, that transaction over the next few months? Well, I think that that ground game is essential, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. This is the get out the vote effort that every campaign has to have a strong ground game in order to really actually get people motivated enough to show up. I actually think voter enthusiasm is so high on both sides of the aisle that I don't expect people to be sitting at home this November or even not, you know, mailing in their ballot in time. So I think that 
because there's so much attention on this election, because people are so energized, we really don't have to worry too much about getting people there. But I do think that if we, if everyone doesn't do their part to check off the list and say, did we go around? Did we canvas? Did we call? Did we text? Did we use every tech and personnel tool at our disposal to make sure people actually show up? you know, we could have a very different outcome than what we're seeing in the polls. Yeah, I love to see the engagement on both sides of the aisle. Lindy Lee, Denise Gitsum, thank you both. Thank you so much.